Hi, my name is Emily Stetner. This is Jake O'Donnell, Azan Khan, and Aman Kalawani, and we also consist of Caden Hawkinson, who is currently not with us, and we are Buffalo. So seven years ago, I was in the passenger seat of my aunt's Honda Mini. We were driving to the local pool, and my five and seven year old cousin were in the back seat buckled up, or so we thought. Midway through the car ride, my five year old cousin unbuckled his seatbelt and began to cause a commotion in the back seat. As a result, he became a distraction for my aunt who was driving. My aunt decided to turn around during the car ride and try to put my five year old cousin back into his seat. But as she did this, her eyes were taken off the road, and we almost hit the car directly in front of us. So my car ride experience with my aunt and cousins and other car ride experiences across the U.S. can go differently with our product Buckle Up. Buckle Up provides a silicone seatbelt cover that goes over the seatbelt seat buckling mechanism and prevents children ages 3 through 8 from unbuckling their seatbelt. As seen in the photo, this is one of our group members, uh, Little Sisters, she, the silicone seatbelt Buckle or silicone seatbelt cover is over the seatbelt buckling mechanism and prevented her from unbuckling her seatbelt. So our first unique value proposition is it's easy to apply. This silicone is super stretchy and can fit over any different size buckling mechanism. Second of all, it's easy to use. It's easy for the adult to be able to press down this button to unlatch their child, but due to the strength of a three to eight year old, they're unable to press this button down. And third of all, it's affordable. Our product has our one unit of our product is two of these covers, given that there tends to be two children within our target market, which is three to eight year olds, or three to, the parent's child of three to eight year olds, um, and it's $25 for two covers, not just one. So our ideal customer is a mom with the three to eight year old child, like I said, and specifically a mom who tends to be driving their child around a lot, and is definitely concerned about the child's safety with safety products that they're buying either within the house or within the cars. So our market size is both in households and revenue. Our market size in households is 100, er, 120 million households in just the United States. And that's our total addressable market. Our serviceable addressable market is around 2.79 million households. And we got this number by taking the total amount of households in the United States and dividing it by the amount of mothers who drive, amount of mothers who use child-proof products, and the amount of mothers who have children ages 3 to 8. Uh, our, the light blue circle here represents our year one sales, which is around 1,100 households. And this is because we plan to capture around 0.04% of the market and only our first year sales. Our market size and revenue is $3 billion for our total addressable market. And our serviceable addressable market is $70 million. And then the amount of our revenue in our year one sales is $25,000. Again, this is because we plan to capture 0.04% of the market. So for some of our competitors, um, these guys are both indirect competitors, pictured on the top, the green one, it's called Buckle Roo. Um, they solve our problem, uh, but they use a different solution, as in they cover the seatbelt with a plastic product, and you have to use an accessory, such as a key or credit card, to unbuckle the seatbelt. And then on, pictured on the bottom is Buckle Guard, which is made out of the same material as, as ours, which is silicone. But, as same with Buckle Roo, you have to use a key or a, other accessory to unbuckle. All right, and then for marketing methods, we mainly focused on using Instagram, and we would advertise posts such as like some of our posts on our Instagram, which include like innovative versions of our prototype, um, our explainer video, and overall just progression of our company. And then all of us as a group, we also went to local parks like Citizens Park and South Barrington Park, and um, we talked to parents there who had young children. And then um, we also um, handed out some covers within the Barrington High School like community. We handed it to teachers with little Broncos to try with their crit with their kids, and we got tons of good feedback from that. So what worked? Uh, we found that in-person marketing is what worked the most, and this is because our target customers were able to see our product and learn how it worked. And we, uh, we went to local parks, like he said, South Barrington Club, Citizens Park, and this is some of those. Uh, statistics we've received. We received five pre-orders from in-person marketing and as well as a lot of positive feedback to improve our prototype as well as people who are willing to tr like test out our prototypes with our new and improved ones. Alright, and then what didn't work as well is some of our Instagram ads. Like, we ended up reaching 1,400 people but it only uh, caused us to get 20 website clicks so we figured out like in-person marketing was a lot better. And um, we also were intending to contact bloggers to publicize our product, but we reached out to 12 of them and only one responded and they didn't seem too into it. So we realized we didn't want to get like more publicity, but more evidence that our product would be useful and solve problems. One thing I wanted to note about our in-person interviews is that we, most of our time that we spent with this MVP was spent on Instagram advertising. And in-person interviews is a 
strategy that we implemented a little bit later, which is why our pre-orders are a little bit lower. And something with the bloggers, one of the other reasons why our blog or the blogger wasn't successful was that because she was located in India and our target market is in the United States. So that's why we didn't uh, also use this blogger. So our indirect channel, eventually we would want to get our product on Amazon because it can, lead, it can be reached by a large platform of adults who are willing to buy our product and are interested in child safety devices. Also, Amazon makes it super easy for us because they're able to deal with all the packaging and shipping. We just have to supply Amazon with our product. So our direct channel is our website. Our direct channel is uh, our, our, our direct channel is our website because we plan to sell our product directly through the customer through our website. And yeah, that's our, that's our only direct channel. Our direct channel is reached, we create it through our MVP and it's reached through the Instagram ads that we posted because we also have an Instagram and a Facebook account and the link to our landing page is in the bio of both of those. So for our cost of good, our one unit of revenue is two silicone seatbelt covers and it costs $25. Our cost of goods is $3.70, which leaves us with a gross margin of around 85%. And we are profiting off of each unit around $21 to $21.30. So for our net profit and market share, uh, as well as our gross profit, in year one we're making a gross profit of $21,300. And in year five we're making a gross profit of $130,000. Hundred thirty and seven hundred thirty-nine thousand, and then in year one our net profit is a little low at five thousand dollars seven hundred ninety-two, but we make a big jump in year five, all the way up to seventy thousand and eight hundred thirty-three dollars, and for our market share, as said before, we plan to sell to zero point zero four percent of our market share, making uh, twenty-five percent, uh, twenty-five thousand dollars. So for our MVP, we, both, we tested our solution, customer segment, and customer relationships. We tested our solution by releasing a prototype to three different, uh, three different mothers who are in our fo focus group and our, our, are our ideal customers. And we tested our solution by releasing a prototype. And after receiving feedback in order to improve our prototype, our customer segments was tested by releasing a prototype to our ideal customers, three of them, which are actually teachers here at BHS. All of the teachers had children from the ages three to eight. And finally, we tested our customer relationships through Instagram advertisements. Uh, we were able to reach a lot of different mothers through, uh, who are located on Instagram, and we received around 1,800 impressions through Instagram. All right, and then for our measurement of success, uh, as we said, like from the prior MVP pitch, we were gonna take quantitative and qualitative data. Some of the quantitative data was uh, we had 1,400 people view our page, but we wanted more to be um, viewing our page, and um, we ended up getting 20 website clicks from that, and also we got five pre-orders from the in-person marketing. And our qualitative success is where it's more at, like where it's more important, and we got better feedback because we, um, we went to the parks and we had like direct conversations with the mothers, with the kids, and they were very excited about our product. And our most recent prototype is exciting to hear that. Uh, the mother told us that the child couldn't unbuckle herself out of the seatbelt, so. It worked. Mm -hmm. And then this is just a little timeline we planned out uh, from the MVP pitch process. And we planned on getting our first, implementing our first set of prototypes by March 10th. We were a day late, got it done by March 11th. And then we ended up receiving our feedback a little early. After our first teacher tried it out, we got it back by March 30, or March 28th instead of March 31st. And then after she gave us that feedback, we implemented and sent out more to another teacher. Our goal is to get it in by April 4th and send it out to them, and we ended up getting it by April 2nd. And then we also got the feedback from our second implementation early. We got it by April 14th, and we were scheduled to get it by April 16th. Also, um, the feedback that we received after our second round of prototypes, the teacher told us that this top lip was too thin so the child is still able to press down and unbuckle the latch. So this is our most recent prototype. We made it thicker so that the adult would have an easy time unbuckling it by pressing the red button, but it was too thick and the child was too weak to unbuckle it. Yep, and then by, uh, by April 20th we were able to send out our third and final set of prototypes, which is our best prototype right there. And then 
we ended up getting the feedback as we planned. And then we also created our explain of, explainer video via Fiverr. We had a video an animator make us a video. It's on our Instagram page, and we got that back by April 19th. And then also we finished our landing page through midway through March. Got it fully up and going. So for our capital ads, we are asking for $6,500 in return for 10.4% of our company. Uh, our ads can include our startup costs, which is an LLC, which is $150, a design patent, which is $1,500, our development costs, which include our prototype, $550, as well as our marketing on Instagram and Facebook, which is $2,500. It also includes our uh, maximum cumulative loss, uh, meaning that we will be losing $295 before we start making a profit and a liquidity cushion of $1,505 just in case our numbers are a little bit off. That's the little extra money that can give us that extra couple. So for our exit strategy, we plan to sell in year five to companies such as CarMax or Jiffy Lube. Say they're buying a car or getting their car uh, uh, maintenance, they can feel free to purchase the product for their kid and and be able to use it. So if you invest in us, you guys will have a money multiple of 4.9 times and an internal rate of return of 45.8%. And thank you so much, and remember that things go better when you're buckled up. prototypes to my math teacher and she has a five-year-old daughter and a nine-year-old son and the nine-year-old son is outside of our like target market of three to eight and she said that her nine-year-old son is like a fairly active pretty like fit like kid and I think it's mostly just on muscle of able to be able to be able to push that down because it's really the thickness to be able to access that like click um, so she said that her nine-year-old son was barely able to unbuckle himself, and he's a pretty fit kid, and he said, she said that he had to try super hard to get himself out of the silicone cover. So the feedback from her teacher uh, confirmed that our target market would be mothers with children ages three to eight. The explainer video is interesting that you had a relatively num large number of views. 20 people go to the website and then nothing. What was on, what was the call to action at the website? Like if I saw the video, went to your website, what was I prompted to do or not do? So the first thing that, that is prompted to, the, to a possible customer or ideal customer when they enter our website is their first step would uh, obviously buckle up our tagline, but then directly, right when they went, enter the reps, website, is the option to buy now. And then below that would be like a contact us so we wanted to meet the customer, ideal customer, with the immediate option to buy or pre-order our product uh, right when they enter our website. And there was no no one clicked on buy now. Uh, no, we didn't have we didn't have any uh, successful pre-orders, completed pre-orders. Uh, did people click on buy now? Uh, uh, I think it was I think it's like nine, eight or nine of the the users who went on our website clicked the buy now. But we just didn't have any of the successful pre-orders through that buy now. Approach. Okay, did it say twenty-five dollars buy now? It was it was first buy now, which then prompted them to a picture of our product, and then the price of twenty-five dollars, and then that's where they. Uh, okay, so uh, you had to find out twenty-five dollars after you clicked on buy now. Yeah. Okay, I mean, if you, you should continue with that explainer video, but you may want to have just an improvement in the placement, like experiment with it. Okay. Like put the price, yeah. buy now, mm -hmm. right now, you know, and and have $25 and includes, mm -hmm. you know, two, uh, and then see where it goes. Because there's some, there's some uh, evidence that's coming from that, that 1,300 people were intrigued, but they didn't mm -hmm. want to do anything about it. That might mean your idea is like, hey, it's not that great of an idea. Let's go on to something else. Mm -hmm. uh, or it could be, hey, the execution of how the order was was just too clunky, 
and you never, you got you got faked out that people really were interested, but it was cumbersome to get there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is what you want to do, do a lot of like, it's called the A-B testing. You do it A one way, then you do B the other way, and you compare the results. So yeah, the reason I think why we didn't get as much uh, clicks as we want to is because the video was kind of long and it didn't like get directly to the point, uh -huh. like as immediately as we wanted it to. And like, seconds. yeah, and the video was like good and it gave a good idea of our product, but it didn't really like tell the customer like go to our website and buy this now. It was more Could just, you tell like, how many people started the video and didn't finish it? That is not something that like a statistic that Instagram it's provides us with right. because they don't have to actually start the video. It's right when they're met with the post, the video just instantly starts. So you don't know how long they spend on it before they scroll past yeah, it. Right. Yeah, right. Well, you're, like you're at 400 and so of the 390, 471 or something, I think you said 431. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually went to your webpage. Uh, no, so it was 1,300 in, or it was impressions. It, we had, I think it was 1,800 impressions, but it was, it provided us with like 471 full views, but it just wasn't showing us that in between of how many people just saw it and how many people finished it. Okay, thank you. Curious. Um, someone said your video was too long and it took too long to get to the point. What do you think the point of your video was? More to just like educate the viewers and tell them like almost to like affect them emotionally and get them kind of like where like oh my gosh I might need this okay. mic. I'm only going to give you five words to use. What was the point of your video? Um, probably to explain to the customer like what our product is. Okay. So let me back up on that. Um, that may be great from a founder or manufacturer's perspective, you want to explain to them what your product is. But as a consumer, potential consumer, I frankly don't care. What I do care about though, is if I'm a parent of young kids, safety, primo, number one, number one, because I'm spending all sorts of energy to keep my kids safe, right? Buying the right cars, make sure they're buckled up, make sure they've got their safety devices. It never occurred to me that little junior or juniorette can unbuckle themselves. Um, and for $25 for a pair of buckles, that's not a lot of money to make sure that my child is secure and safe. So that may be something in addition to what Mr. Miles was suggesting of A-B testing for your purchase to consider for your video because what you should be selling is safety for the um, child. But Emily, um, you got a Our different? video, I would say, definitely starts off with a little bit more of like an empathy kind of aspect where okay. we included a lot of stats about like, the amount of children that are unbuckled during their car rides. So honestly, I would disagree to an aspect because I believe that our video showed more so like the empathy of like, this is how many children are possibly in danger because this is okay. how many have their seatbelt unbuckled. Um, so I would say that does necessarily connect to the parent on more of that deep emotional level that parents tend to lean towards of, because they want okay. to protect Can you send child. us the video? Yeah, yeah, yeah that if, would I could, if I could re-answer your question of five words, what the explainer video does, it was first our product and then like the problem is real. Okay. So it showed the parent. I, I would re-engineer that. Okay. What's the benefit to the parent who's going to buy it? Mm -hmm. Why should they believe you? And then, and then you can okay. start rationalizing yeah. what it is. You have 10 minutes to pitch. Would it make sense to actually do the 45 second explainer video so at the beginning? We were thinking about it, but like we'd have to go back there and play it, and we didn't want to use up all of our 10 minutes. But we did include in our pre pitch document, which you guys all have access to, I think. Yeah. Okay. okay. I had a question about um, how did you decide? Um, I think you said there was two um, places you were going to try to sell it at. How did you decide on those two stores? Um, so first, we had Amazon as our indirect channel just because it could reach a large audience. So we thought that that would be able to cover the most amount of potential like eyes that would be able to, be able to see our product. Um, and then our landing page is the other place that we could buy it, which was a direct channel straight from us. And the other way we thought that that would be the best place for them to buy it is because of our Facebook and our Instagram ads that would be implemented more in the future. We only did one Instagram ad over the course of the last MVP. but. It would be an easy place from them to go straight from the ad, straight to our website to be able to buy it. And it's also in the bio of both of those social media accounts. And but I think you mentioned the two physical yeah, stores. Car, yeah, for the JP Loop and CarMax. Yeah. So yeah. We, we, we thought for the CarMax, we, we, weren't, we weren't completely sure if we could sell to like an actual car dealership, as in an Audi dealership, a Lexus dealership, uh, MotorWorks. But we wanted to target some place that where we believe that our ideal customer would be. And Jiffy Lube is a location that's located in Farrington, not uh, maybe, I think, five minutes from here. And then there's a CarMax that's located in, I, I, I believe it's in Schaumburg. And uh, we believe that those are two 
exit strategy or stores that would be included in our exit strategy that be, I think, perfect places to sell our product. I have one suggestion on that. I know at, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the store Bye Bye Baby, mm -hmm. they have a whole section of safety devices, right. and Target is kind of following suit. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe those sort of stores would be a better landing mm -hmm. spot for you, because at least traditionally in our family, I as a mother buy the safety <laughs> items, mm -hmm. not my husband, and I've right. never been to these two um, mm -hmm. places you mentioned. Yeah. Okay. The other thing that maybe is linked to that is you found out that your in-person was uh, more effective than like a kind of remote marketing, digital marketing channel, and that, and that sort of implies that customers will want to see the product mm -hmm. before they buy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a very different channel than the one that you guys are working with, which is sell through Amazon, sell through a website. Maybe they need to see it in a store. I pick up what, what Margarita was saying a little bit on the emotional component. I think when you guys initially pitched, I think a big differentiator with your competitors is that cushion thing, mm -hmm. which is an inconvenience issue, but I think it's also a major safety issue. If I need to get a child out of the car, mm -hmm. my first thought is I'm trying to get that kid out. I don't want to have to remember grabbing my keys or grabbing something. So the fact that you just press it off, mm -hmm. I think a big safety mm -hmm. issue. Um, that you might be able to create an emotional reaction. 30, 30 seconds. Oh, absolutely, because I think mm -hmm. Mr. Miles has said before, you don't even carry keys anymore, do you? It's a pop. Right. Right. Competitors tend to have that little key attached to their key ring, so. Yeah, you time yourself and see how long it takes <laughs> to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, last All right. question. So what are your plans? I would love to get funded and continue with this group. I mean, I'm not the strongest presenter, but I'm passionate about it. And <laughs> if we don't get funded, I'd go to the accelerator next year. Um, I would also love to be funded and continue on with Buckle Up. Uh, unfortunately, the journey would end here for me. Okay. Uh, I would love to get funded and continue with Buckle Up, and even if we don't, I'd, I'd love to explore other options in the next program. I'm also pretty certain that Katie is in the same shoes as the three of us. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. You want to do this in Mandarin?